Oh, hi. My name's Leonard and I'm a model maker and sometimes sculptor here at Wedded Workshop. And today you're going to be joining me for a little bit of hobbit hole creation. I'm currently working on number 24, which has got the east and west doors. It's right near the, the beginning of uh, Gandalf's cutting where you'll go if you go and visit Hobbiton itself. It's a lovely little hobbit hole. And um, because it's got a, a front and a back door, we decided to put it on one of the bigger bases, which is great. So it's a little bit bigger than, uh, say, this one over here, number 35. As you can see over there. This is, so th what I've got here is, um, these are the original masters that we sculpted. I've got a whole lot of them scattered around here. And the reason why they're scattered around is because I, I go and pilfer bits and pieces from them as we go because it's, it's always fun to reuse buckets and spades and that, as well as modeling up some new ones. <sighs> right, so I'm gonna get sculpted on this, and, uh, but hang on a sec. Everybody, meet Dave, right behind me here. Hello. So Dave's just busy working on one of our, uh, our new projects that we'll probably see in quite a few months' time uh, with the development cycle of the, some of the larger things. Um, but he, Dave's working with uh, Dan Cockersell on this one, and um, I'm not, not going to say what it is, you know, but we'll just leave that as a little secret. I'm sure you guys will figure it out about five minutes ago. Um, now, uh, what I've got here is, um, I'll give you a, a quick rundown. So the white bits, we use plastic uh, strips, so we use evergreen, which comes in a packet like this. We've got a whole lot. This is my my mixed, mixed bunch that I, I collect. So it's all little bits of, of different kinds of plastic. And, um, and with that, we do a lot of our model making because they come in uh, in set sizes. And so you kind of get the hang of what size you, you're after. Um, and there's a, there's a lot more. We've got a whole bunch of them over there. I'll grab them out later, I'm sure, as, I, as I'm moving along. Um, Dave will also use the lathe. That's the big green machine behind me you might be able to see for turning the, the roundels of the hobbit hole doors and that to make them look all, all fancy. And we use it for making the fences. So here's a little bit that's been prepared earlier, which is a whole lot of fence posts. There's a little letter box on it as well. That bit goes on the front over there, but I've taken it off so that I can get access down behind for the molding. Um, there's another little bit that goes on the front as well. It's got a little wagon wheel. We may have used that one before on something. I think that was actually, ah. there we go. Ah. See what I mean about reusing? So this is um, what's left of the little uh, ale cart that we um, uh, used for number number 2A, was it, I think? And then uh, you can see they stole in the back wheel from it. That's why we pull through all these things all the time. And then, um, yeah, so then Dave will make up the uh, bits in styrene and then I'll take over and, um, and add the, the foliage and then do a bit more model making with some little uh, chairs and stuff like that. Uh, we've got a little broom in a bucket. Um, got a little fern over there as well. That one I stole from the corner of that one. That's number five. Sorry, I kind of forget the names of the numbers of some of them because we, we're rolling on. I think this is um, about the 17th or 18th one we're on, which is fantastic. Plus the um, holiday hobbit holes that we've done to those. Ho, 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 as I like to call them. And, um, and, and on this one, I'm putting a whole lot of little leaves on there because in the reference, now this is the, the reference that Dan, uh, Dan Falcon has done for us. So there's a whole lot of little leaves and that coming down there. So we just want it along there. So we duplicate that. And for those, we've got some handy little stamps. Ah. So these little guys, like that. And we just go, you just take a bit of your, your handy strip styrene. You want a nice thin piece, like that. So that'll be a, that'll be a 0.25 mil thick bit of styrene. And you jab it in there. And I'll just do that a few times. And lo and behold, we've got some little leaves. And then I'll just bash them up a bit and stick them on and and that's a, that's a lovely relaxing thing to do on a, on a nice wintry morning. It's, um, it's really nice, nice playing with little plastic leaves, uh, a whole lot of them. Um, yeah, tests your sanity sometimes. All right, so then going on to the sculpting. 
uh, I use Siobhan Hard, which comes in a, in a block like this. So this stuff is pretty rock hard when it's cold. And that's one of the beauties of it, is that it, um, you can then heat your tool to, to allow it to get some really sharp detail in without stuff crumbling and that. So it's, but you do have to be careful, of course, in that um, when you want to heat the overall thing, you don't want to melt bits that you've already done. So I've got my little heat lamp here, and that is got my little blob of Siobhan under it, which I'm busy warming up. So this is the difference between the two. So you can see this one over here, if I just dab that really hard for effect, that's, that's not going anywhere through the, through the plastic. But, uh, but this stuff over here, now that this is nice and warm, it's nice and gooey. So then I spread some of that on for where I want to put some foliage. So you just dab it on nice and, nice and liberally, spread it on. There we go. Trying to get, make sure that you don't have too many air pockets below it because that can cause a havoc when, uh, when it comes time to molding because silicon goes and runs around all this stuff uh, when it's under pressure and vacuum and that. So it'll, um, it'll, uh, it'll make a bit of a mess of, of things when you're pulling the this out of the silicon mold because the silicon grabs it. And, and we kind of like to have, uh, have them as much in the original condition as we can just so that we can have them for display and show and tell and that. So now that I've put a, a, a good blob of, uh, of warm plasticine on, I'll, uh, I'll then just start sculpting the, uh, some of the, the, the grass in there. So I, I go in with a, a tool, which this is one of the few commercial tools that, I've, that I use. Um, most of the stuff that I, I use, I make. And I'll, I'll give a quick rundown of some of those, those little tools. But then you just, I just start going in, you know, just not too, too even. It's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of thing when you're sculpting in reverse. Um, away from yourself, so um, we'll see how that goes. And then just put another little blob on top. This, this tool's great, it's just got a little spatula on there. And when the clay is warm that you're busy working with, it's, it's pretty good because then it, it adheres nicely to the, the layer below it. So after a while, if I, if I step away from this project for a bit, I'll sometimes put it under the heat lamp, but not as close as this, which will then just keep the clay nice and warm because it can get a good get a bit chilly in here at times um, when you're not sitting directly on top of a heater. So there we go. So I'll just, I'll just do some of that. And then I'll, I'll take a, another tool that I made. So this one, it's not a very complicated tool at all. That's just a pin that I've curled the edge with. And, uh, and, and that I just used for getting in there. So I've got these little pliers, which are handy little ones. They've got a little rounded head. So, and I just use that for shaping it. So it's just just bend the bend it down there if I want, you know, I get some sort of weird, weird shapes going on there. And the reason why I do that is just because when you're sculpting grass, it's, you know, you, you want to get a few different, different shapes going in there. Otherwise, it kind of all looks the same, same. Um, and these tools have a little bit of flex in them. So that's just one of the things that I, I like with these ones. It's just having a little bit of, a little bit of movement in the tool. Then when you want something for a little bit more a little bit more rigid for, for scraping it in. But, it, it, you know, you get a nice little grass effect going on there. And so you'll want to then just, I'll just pull out some of those just to get a bit more grassy, feathery edge. So also, when I want to get a bit of a bit localized heat on there, I'll get my little blowtorch. So my little igniter's gone, but I'll just fire that up. And I'll just turn it down so that it's not too enthusiastic. There we go. There's, there's hardly any flame there at all. You might not even be able to see it. But that does mean that I can then just get in there and just warm up some of those bits over there that I put on earlier. Because I want them to be nice and soft so that I can really dig the tool in just to get a, get a bit of a recess in there without chipping the, uh, the bit of harder, um, the harder clay off. So you can see there. So I'll just make a little clump in there, get a bit of a hole. So I'll tell you about some of the other tools that I use. So they're really simple. Like this is one of my favorite tools that I use for everything from applying glue and sculpting. And, and uh, that's as simple as taking the handle of an old chip brush. These are 
whenever I finish with one of these brushes, I, um, I just chop the handle off. And then I've just popped a bit of uh, spring steel in there that looks like a bit of maybe one, 1 1.5 mil. And I just heat that with the blowtorch. Ta-da. And I just whack it on it with a, with a hammer on an anvil and flatten it out. And then take a dremel with a sanding bit and just to flatten it off. And so it's currently got a bit of glue on for something I was preparing earlier. So I'll just scrape that off. Sometimes I sand it, but because you, you don't pay anything for these really, they're so cheap to make, you can make a lot of tools from one length of spring steel, is that, um, and you just reshape it as, as required and whack it with a Dremel, and, but it's really handy because this one's got a bit of flex in it, but not as much as the other one. So it really helps when you want to dig in into some of those. And I just dab them down. Sometimes just flick the little bits off, chuck them back on the pile. This will change as I as, as I go along. I'll um, you know, sometimes you go nah. It's like I've, although I've sculpted a hole in the grass, you'll put a big blob on it just so that it looks a bit more interesting. Um, oh yeah, these little friends over here, are mushroom overlords. They're a, they're a really simple thing to make, just for some dress pins, clothing pins. I think I stole this thing from my mom like 20 something years ago. Um, but yeah, it's really handy because all you do is you just chop the head off the pin and stick it in. And hobbits love their mushrooms, so I try and, ever since I think it was farmer maggots, when I put some mushrooms down the side, I've always been trying to put some mushies in on the, uh, on the hobbit holes because it's, you can't have hobbits without any mushrooms. And um, yeah, so let's carry on with, with some sculpting on these bits as well. So that's a little bit of a fence on there. So I want to get that to fit in there. So you can see when Dave did this, he, he put a little key in there. So I've just got to make sure the key fits in there. Um, I do have pulled it away. I do intend putting a little table under there. So I'm probably going to swipe a table from one of these other bits and pieces over here. Ah, while I'm at it. Uh, so this is um, what's left of our of the mill as it came out of um, the mold. As you can see we've got the backs all open there. So it's, it comes out, uh, some of the bits crumble off of, and you can see that's like the silicon gets jammed in there and, and pulls it off. That's a separate bit, little boat. But you can see it's, a, it's quite a decent size uh, compared to, to that hobbit hole over there. But this was a great one to work on. So. Um, that should be with you guys not too long from now. And then, uh, can I steal something from this one? Love this one. This is a little, one of the apple orchard. Um, so the apples on there, those are pretty much apples <laughs> from a um, model railroad um, accessories. It's just, it just came in a, a packet which had thousands of the little apples and oranges. So we just stuck those on. So there's no point in spending forever making individual little apples at that scale. Um, and it's also got little lavender. And the little lavenders, I've spent a bit more time making those. But that was just a bit of styrene, which is the plastic I showed you earlier. So you get little um, rods of that. And just put a blob of glue on the end and then just shape that. I will use um, some, I don't have any on me right now. But I, I will use some putty in that that I thin down just to get a bit of texture on things, like the top of the mushrooms and that, because you don't want them to be absolutely smooth. Um, it's nice to have a bit of texture that the paint can, can grab on. Um, it's always good for when the paint is going to do washes and, and that sort of thing. But let's see. So over here, this one's got a whole lot of bits and pieces on it. I don't think I'll be stealing any from this. So this is our little fisherman's one. So he's got a little, um, he's got his little pot. He's busy uh, heating up his tar. And he's got a little tar brush on there. Oh yeah, and on the top of that one, it's got some little uh, flowers that I, I made a while back. And little 3D printed flowers. Did those on the project, and um, it's it's just handy sometimes having that sort of thing where we can just click print and, and get a few extra flowers. It just once again adds a a bit of a different um, a bit of different life to these things. Um, so when we were doing this one. Um, Ru and Richard had a look at it. He was a bit concerned that they, you weren't quite getting the full effect of the uh, little coracle over there. So we, we just stuffed some, um, I stuffed some, uh, some wet 
paper towel under there and put some glue on it to make it look like the hobbit had pat some rags under there or some some sacks or something like that just to lift it up a bit so that he could get better access to um, to doing the tar. It's got little fishes and just little eels on the side there. Did I put mushrooms in this one? Yes I did. There they are. Right there next to the door he's gonna have a snack of some ale and some some mushies. That should be a fun afternoon for that one. Um, Alright and uh, so we'll carry on doing some sculpting. Now so once again, grass. There's a lot of grass in these hobbit holes, funnily enough. I'll use something like that tool. And I'll heat this tool. So the benefit, of course, of having metal tools is that you can heat them. Uh, and I'll show you why. Let's just get... There we go. We got flame. I just don't want to have it, you know, shooting a blue hot flame and uh, you happen to, like, maybe glance your arm against it or something. That's, that's not going to be a fun afternoon. So we just heat that up. So this, once again, popsicle sticks with some pins, probably ones that have been uh, lost their heads for mushrooms from other hobbit holes. And we'll go in there and we'll just, you can see that, oh yeah, it's may really making a good, well you may say mess, but I say it's art, um, of that one over there. So we're really just getting in there, but it's, it's giving a, quite a cool effect. So afterwards I'll, uh, I'll go in with some uh, isopropyl alcohol because it really, the, the isopropyl alcohol sort of softens the clay a bit and, um, but, and it kind of gives a nice texture as well um, on it. it, it you know, you, there's so many different things that you can change the, change whatever medium you're working with. So we, we kind of just figure out which one's best. Some, some of the guys use fuel like net on this, which whew, that really, really softens it out. Um, so you can see I'm just giving a kind of a little bit of a twirl as I go. Kind of weird working in in reverse here. But it's, you know, just trying to get a bit of sort of wind movement or something in there, which is, which is a bit hard, you know, when it's static, but you, you hope that they had generally have good weather in the, in the Shire. So it's just doing there. And it's, uh, the cool thing is, of course, when it gets a bit dirty, uh, got these little, little paper towels here. So you just heat it up and just wipe it off. Careful you don't burn yourself. I didn't there, just, just in case you were wondering. It's just a friendly warning. Uh, and then uh, and you go for it again. So when I come to time to doing something like a tree, it's a very, very similar process to this. All right, we just get a, where'd the tree go? Ugh. Now, this one's in green, Chavant. Um, so the, some of the, the sculptors, they prefer um, different, different colors because there's a, a slight difference in, in texture to them. I prefer working in the red, um, but sometimes after Dave has finished doing the, um, uh, the styrene bit of it, he'll, he'll just, start putting on the, um, the the base coat of the Chavant and then you'll grab the clay that's nearest and so sometimes I, I get a mix of whatever green and red Dave has been you know decided to do it on so um, I'm not just too worried about that but this is now made from uh, once again bits of styrene I just chopped that, some of those together from some of the thicker stuff and then used bits of uh, an acrylic putty from Vallejo um, just swiping that in there with a paintbrush, just thin it out with a, um, a little bit of water, which is it's a really nice medium to use for getting some sort of bark textures on that. And then to try and get some sort of leaf effect on those, once again, make another tool. I've got one here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have to go digging through this pile of stuff and try and find This is my toolbox. It's like more of a tool tray, but it starts off with only a few things in it, and each time I use a tool, it kind of goes in here. And then... Um, it makes a little fun little excursion of trying to find, oh there, there we go, ah, what have we got here? So this is another tool I'm busy making, it's a little flat blade, uh, haven't stuck it on a handle yet. Um, it, it didn't quite have the spring that I was hoping for because it's made from about two and a half mil spring steel. So it's just a bit of experimentation, but you can see it's quite a nice little blade there. Um, I must stick that on a handle sometime. And um, alrighty, let's go hunting through here. No. No, oh, there's that one. Oh, oh, there we go. 
There we go. And that one too. Yep. Ah, here we go. So, also make loops. So I've got some bigger loops that I use, but these ones are nice and tiny. Um, so that's just when you want to do some sm nice smoothing. It's not what I'm going to use on this one though. So that goes back. Now, once again, little um, little tools. So these are some of my leaf punches that I just made up. They are, um, this one's more for just doing uh, little tiny weeds and stuff. So I'll, I'll jab those in. Let's do some of those right here. So uh, I'm not going to warm this one up just yet, but you can see, so you get that sort of effect there. Now, I'll put those in, and then I'll just sculpt away some of the, uh, some of the stuff in the side there. So, and you kind of just give it a grassy effect. Let's warm the tool up a bit. Sometimes it's actually handy to um, keep your tools under the lamp as well. So I'll do that every now and again. Uh, you can see there, so that's now just going to get some sort of grass effect. I'm probably going to go, I mean, I will be going over that area because that's where the bit where the wagon wheel goes. So that's going to erase that. But then I'll use that. Sometimes just shape, shape it with my little pliers. These are nice little round head pliers by Wave. And I just use that, just curl that back a bit because I want it to... Uh, that's the beauty of this. It's just, you know, you just adjust the shapes as you need. File that down if you want it to be a bit thinner. It's, it's just, you know, it's fun if you're not going to heartache over your, your ex more expensive tools um, on some of these. It's, and don't get me wrong, you know, you, you do want to have some decent tools in your, in your tool bag that are going to be able to stand up to, to some of the rigors of hard clay sculpting. Um, but when you're doing little things like this, these are great. All right, and then I'll get a little bit of, a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol now. Just going to smooth that out. So you get a little bit, just a, a dab, in here. Because of course, um, normally we have the extractors running, which makes this a bit better. But um, without the extractor, I don't want to get a little bit fuzzy, um, so early in the morning, with the alcohol evaporating. Make sure your torch is off too, because the stuff is quite flammable. And then I'll just use it on, on those bits, which it gives a. I personally just really like the the look of how it ends up. It gets rid of all the little little bits of um, clay. You get little little balls and stuff that that appear as you work with it. Almost put this in the heat gun in the in the blowtorch. There we go. So it's really nice. Just, it just helps clear it out a bit. You can use, of course, different coarsenesses of, of brush. So this is a. And you get just different effects as well, which is which is great. So you can really go in there. You know, it's sometimes doing this sort of thing is all about the happy little accidents. Thanks, Bob. So um, it's yeah, just experiment. That's just a whole lot of the fun in it. Alrighty. So then I'll pop this one on here. This one is going to be fixed when I when it comes time to molding. Um, so I've done a bit of sculpting in the, on the reverse there, and often you'll you'll do a bit of sculpting on it and then manhandle it, like I've done on the front here, which you kind of need to do. So you're just going to go over there and re-sculpt that. And this little wagon wheel bit over here. So that's going to that's going to take this away here. Right, so that's going to go on there. So that's just covered up the little little weeds that I had lovingly made earlier. All right, so it's it's just you know so th those will get in. so I now seat those in and, and try and just get as, as good a seal as I can along the bottom over there. Then of course we've got the back door over here. I think I'm going to have to find a little bench or something to go over here. Just looking at the reference, um, they've got a nice little bench with the tray and some pots on there, and that looks pretty cool. So I'm probably going to go for that. Um, I did have, at some stage, the little um, uh, a little trough in there. Um, it has since been removed slash not lost. 
Um, somewhere around there, I'm positive. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll put that in uh, a bit later. And um, yeah, it's just, and then just fill that with a bit of flowers and something as well. So we also, in some of the areas like the, um, where, the, where the door surrounds are, we like to put a lot of like scratches and like wood texture in there. Because it's great for the painters who, you know, they really take care of, of these pieces. Um, and, uh, you know, they look after them as their own. Uh, and they, they, they do take it quite, you know, quite, a, quite of a personal sort of thing to it. So, so, yeah, we like to give them as much as we can, like little bits of texture, as I said earlier, on the mushrooms and on the doors, just scratching in the woodwork and the bricks giving a bit of texture and that. So it's, um, it also just adds, you know, a lot of environment, life to it because you want to make it look like the hobbits have been there for a while. So putting little bits of junk, but they, they're proud guys, so they, they look after their things just like the painters look after our sculpts. So again, oh, whoopsie. <laughs> Sorry, Leonard. Yeah, so it's, it usually takes us, um, Dave, around about a week, does, does his bit of it, then um, it'll take me about a week of sculpting on them. Um, that's in between all the other stuff that we do. So, uh, and then it'll go through to Shanti, where he'll um, make a mold, and then it'll, um, uh, once we've done that, we'll do clean up on the, the resins and we'll then send those masters off to the paint shop where um, Jules and his team will paint on them. So I think um, Johnny is gonna be painting on this one. Um, he, he, he was in the schedule for it, which would be great. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, tuning in, and um, hope you enjoy the little hobbit holes. We really, really enjoy making them. And um, Fortunately, there's many, many more to go in the lineup. We're only we're less than halfway through them. And if you can, head off to Hobbiton and uh, enjoy, enjoy it for real. Thank you.